Hey, it's Dave Palmer. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm here today to talk a little bit about a really, really important skill that's absolutely essential to be successful in AP Human Geography. In fact, it's one of the keys to successes in AP Human. And it's I call it four-level analysis. And what this is is an attack strategy for looking at maps and charts and graphs and even aerial photography. So let's get going on this. Every field of study has a methodology of how you're going to use the key skills of that discipline. And geography is no different. And what we're going to do is we're going to use geographic data, maps, charts, and graphs to help describe the earth and, and places on the earth and where we live. Now, there's also a perspective. And think of this as like different lenses and points of view that you're going to analyze in this course. So we're going to look at both of these, this methodology, but also perspectives. And we're going to use ESPN DC to help you with that. And then we're going to use a case study using the earth at night and some spectacular photos from NASA to help us understand this. This geographic investigation process called four-level analysis has four levels, surprising. Um, the first one is based on some questions. And so what we're going to look at, imagine you're looking at a map, and I'll show you a map here in a second. But what we're going to do is you're going to look at the map, and you say, what's on that map? Where are things on that map? When was the map drawn or the data chart? And then what's the scale? And I'll talk a little bit more about the scale. But basically, is that going to be like the global scale or the national scale or local scale? And we'll talk more about that. Level two is going to be patterns. So when I look at this map, what are the patterns that I see on that map? And be able to describe what that pattern is. Now, you should be able to identify multiple patterns on the map, but state the obvious patterns first, and then be brilliant second. But you should be able to come up with multiple patterns and be very precise with the language that you use to describe those. And then level three, you pick one of those patterns that you described in, in, in the previous level two, and then you attempt to answer these questions. Why there, and how did it get there? Now, level three is the essential questions of geography. Now, most people think the essential question of geography is where things are, and it's a really important question. But the more interesting question is not only where things are, but why are they there, and how do they get there? And if you really spend your time looking at those questions and trying to figure out those questions, you're going to have a great deal of success in AP Human Geography. And then level four is going to be, so what if that pattern continues into the future? What will the impacts be or the effects be? And then we're going to use this ESPN DC, Economic, Social, Political, Environmental, Demographic, and Cultural elements to help make sense of that. Now, I'll have a whole video based on just ESPN DC, but I'll do a quick introduction later in this video. Let's look at the Earth at night. So, what? I'm looking at the Earth at night. When? Uh, this one's like 2000, okay? Where? Earth? Scale? This is the global scale, okay? This is the global scale. It's showing you the whole Earth and the global scale. Now, on this map, or this image, you can start to look for different patterns. And when I look at these patterns, there's all kinds of patterns. And I want you to think about some patterns. If you want to pause the video and write down four or five patterns that you see, literally there are hundreds of patterns, but pick four or five obvious patterns. Some of the patterns that you can see here, and you might have written down quite a few, but one of the most obvious patterns is that the coastlines tend to be brighter than the interior. See, the coastlines of many of the continents tend to be brighter than the interior. That's a pattern. North Africa is dark. Okay, The coastlines of most of the continents are bright. There's a linear pattern that goes from west to east across Russia. These are patterns, and you want to use good words and descriptive words to explain what those patterns are. Here's a simple one. Japan is really bright. There we go. Hey, I want you to look at North Korea right here. We have North Korea and we have South Korea. South Korea is really bright. North Korea is really dark. Okay. So these are some examples of patterns. And so why are the coastlines brighter than the interiors? And we can look at this in a variety of ways. One of the reasons that the coastline, so I'm on level three now, one of the reasons that the coastlines are brighter is because access to resources of the ocean, trade, uh, access to fresh drinking water because of rivers and things like that. But that's kind of hard to see at this scale. Whereas the interiors might have harsher climates, the 
coastlines might have more moderated climates um, from the ocean currents. So these are just some reasons. And there's literally dozens of reasons as to why people live on the coast as opposed to the interior. Level four would be what are the impacts of so many people living on the coast? Well, an environmental impact could be pollution of the seas. Is that a potential environmental impact? Sure. Water pollution, waste flowing into the cities or into the sea from the cities. These are environmental impacts. I can also do economic impacts. Because so many people live on the coasts in these cities, oftentimes the rent and the property values are higher on the coastal areas. So this gives you a sense of some things that you can do. Now, whenever I use the Earth at Night map, I want to make sure you understand something about this because you might think, well, is this a population map and nobody lives here in Africa because it's so dark? Well, no, you need to be careful about that. In this region right through here, there are as many people that live here as live in the entire United States. So, well, why is Africa dark? Well, this starts to bring into development issues, uh, wealth, power, things like this that start to come into play that you're going to learn during this course. So this map is a map that is really important, but I want you to make sure that this is not really a population map. It's really a map of wealth. The brighter areas tend to be wealthier than the dimmer areas, but there that can also be deceiving. So be careful with this map, but it is an excellent map. Now, one of the important skills of geographers is changing scale. So if we change scale, we just zoomed in. Zoom out, zoom in. Zoom out, global scale, zoom in, we'll call it the continental scale. So we zoom in and at this scale we can see different patterns. I can see the patterns, the linear patterns of the United States extending from west to east as they go across the United States. Why? This might be railroads or highways and things like that. I can also see how cities are spread apart. Now, when you do urban unit later in the year, this is going to be central place theory. A little early now for you to know what that is, but later on in the year, that's going to be a theory or a model that you're going to learn that explains why are these cities spread out. And in fact, that brings up a really excellent point. One of the important things with the whys and the hows is you're going to be learning models and big principles, and these are oftentimes used to explain why or how things are there. Not just based on your opinion, but really hardcore academics are going to have these theories, and they're going to help explain why things are where they're at. And that's one of the things that you'll utilize in this course and have to become really good at. So, continental scale. We can also zoom in again. If we zoom in here, oh my gosh, we zoomed into the east area, the northeast United States. Here's New York City. Here's Philadelphia. This is I-95 that extends back here. If we zoom out, this is the megapolis right here. And then you can see this uh, huge population, 50 million people in the United States live here. That's about one out of every six Americans lives in this area right through here. And when we zoom in, we can start to see the pattern of New York City. And we come back to that initial question of that pattern of why do so many people live on the coastline? Because this is a coast and this is a huge populated area. But wait, they don't all live on the coast. They live a little bit in the interior. But there's still a lot of people living on the coast here. So when we move, zoom in, we can oftentimes see different patterns that weren't so available or easy to see at this scale or at this scale. Zooming out, looks like everybody's on the coast. Zoom in, looks like the coast pretty good. Zoom in a little further, yeah, there's people living on the coast here, but man, that's a little interior. But what I do see, remember when I mentioned why do people live on the coast, access to the ocean, ports, harbors, things like that. But there's also fresh water. Here's a river. Okay. When you talk about where people live, ocean is salt water. Rivers are fresh water. Which one is it more important to live next to? Well, fresh water. Okay. You need to live closer to your water source, your fresh water source. We can drink fresh water. We use it to grow agriculture, farming, things like that. And you're going to learn about that later in the year too. Okay. So when I see New York City right here, I see the harbor right here, which is really, really important for trade. When we zoom in, we can see that what this looks like. So here's Manhattan Island right here. And we can see, now this is a pretty contemporary and it's been modified over the time. The river used to extend right through here and it looks different and they've channelized the river. But we can still see the importance of the river 
right? We can see elements of the harbor right over here, as this with these little dots are right here, these little things that stick out. That's um, elements of what the harbor is for you can put large boats, and then you can see that you can still traverse up the river. So in fact that New York is an island is part of its site, and you're going to learn a little bit about site and situation as this class goes, but this is the physical site and its situation. How is it connected, its relationships to other places, and as well as its physical characteristics. Its site, it's on a island. Its situation, it has proximity to the ocean, it has proximity to the river, it allows a gateway to the interior of the country. These are important situation factors. This is the four-level analysis, so make sure that you know this because whenever you time you see a map, you're going to use this, and it will serve you well in your study of geography and trying to figure things out and make you understand the essential questions. Now, I mentioned ESPN DC, and I'll do a whole video on ESPN, DN, ESPN DC, but here we go. It's basically economic. This is like jobs, money, income, social, the conditions in which people live. P stands for political, it's like government and laws. Environmental relates to nature. Uh, demographic relates to population statistics like density, birth rates, death rates. And culture, beliefs, values, the conditions in which we live in. Um, these are the things. Now you can use the ESPN DC to answer the questions of why or how or the impacts. So give an economic reason why people live in certain areas or what's an environmental impact to so many people living on the coast like I explained earlier. That's how you can use ESPN DC. You can also use four level analysis to analyze charts and graphs and maps and things like that. So here's a chart of life expectancy. Now this goes from 1543 to 2015. And so when, when we ask a question about this, you want to look at what? What am I looking at? This is life expectancy. Where? Well, where is different countries of the world plus the world. What's the scale? Well, the scale of the data here is by country with one at a global scale. The world global scale is here. When? 1543 to 2015. Okay, and then the next part, level two, level two is what are the patterns? Well, if the question was what's the pattern between 1600 and 1800s, life expectancy stayed pretty much the same under 40 years for those couple hundred years. But starting in about 1850, life expectancy of the world starts to increase right through here. We see the life expectancies of all countries that are at least represented here starting to rise up. Okay, So you'd look at the years of when the question is asking the pattern, but you would describe from 1900 or 1850 to 2015, life expectancies in the majority of the countries that are shown on the graph have increased dramatically from approximately 40 years to 80 years. And then level two, that's what that is. Level three, why? Why have life expectancies gone up over the last 100 years? That would be something that you're going to learn in this course. And there's lots of reasons. There could be economic reasons, right? There could be demographic reasons. So you would learn to study this and be able to describe that. And then what are the impacts of people living longer in our society? And you're going to learn that in Unit 2 in population. You're going to learn a lot about this with the demographic transition and why people are living longer and the reasons for that. So this would be coming later, but you can explain why people are living and the impacts of um, on our economy, on our laws and our politics and in the environment. Um, you can start to study those things. So four-level analysis will serve you well when looking at a chart. So use this tool whenever you see maps, charts, graphs, images to help you attack what are you seeing. Okay. Thanks. Have a great day and we'll talk to you next time.